factorization can be difficult to implement and test because it often involves some complex logic that needs to exist throughout all layers of the application. Now you may want to use a library to help out with this, such as my own CanCanGem. However, everyone's authorization needs are different, and this may or may not fit your needs well. Also, while I haven't been very active on this project recently, the version 2 branch looks pretty nice, and I do have plans to finish that up at some point. But either way, it's a good idea to learn how to implement authorization from scratch. This way you can adapt it to your needs, and if nothing else, you can get a better understanding of this project and my ideas behind authorization. Now I'll be demonstrating this using this form application, which has many topics, and I can either visit a specific topic, which you can see the different posts here, or I can create a new topic, edit a topic, or destroy a topic. Now I also have some authentication. You can see I'm already logged in through a user account, and I demonstrated how to make this from scratch in episode 250. Now even though I have authentication set up here, I don't have any authorization in this application currently. Users can edit and destroy any topic even if they aren't the ones that created it, but I don't want that. I only want to allow admin users to edit and destroy any topic, which you can see if I edit this profile here. A user has the ability to be marked as an admin, and in that case they should be able to uh, manage all topics. So let's get started in adding some restrictions in what a user is allowed to do. Now I'm going to do this through test-driven development, and I already have some high-level request specs set up for testing various functionality of the topics. So I can list topics out, create them, update them, or destroy them, and this is all tested at the high level using Capybara, and I demonstrated this further in episode 275. Now I already have guards set up for this project, so it's automatically going to run the test for me when I make changes, and you can see they're currently passing. So what I want to do now is test for some authorization. I want to ensure that a user cannot edit a topic unless he's an admin user. So let's add a quick spec in here to say cannot update, or let's just say edit topic as non-admin. And then I want to uh, log in as a non-admin user. So this, is, this login method is just a quick support method I have set up in this application to handle the login process. And then I want to create a new topic. So I'll just say create a topic, and that is using Factory Girl here, which I already have set up. And then I want to visit the edit topic path for that given topic. And then the page should have the content of not authorized because I want them to redirect to back to the home page here and to, to display this message since a normal user shouldn't be able to edit a random topic. So when I save that, the uh, test failed because I am able to access that edit topic page. Now I'll get this test passing by going into the topics controller and adding in a before filter to, uh, let's call a method authorize, and then uh, this is only going to be on that edit action since that's what I'm testing. And I'm going to paste this method down here at the bottom, and it's just called authorize, and it first checks if we have a current user and that the current user is not an admin, and if so, it's going to redirect them back to the root URL saying not authorized. And with that change, we are passing again. That works. However, this is giving me a false sense of security. There are plenty of holes in this authorization. You can see that I'm checking to see that a current user exists before I check if he's an admin, which means that if a user isn't currently signed in, he'll be able to access the edit page. And also, I'm just checking this on the edit action, which means the update action is not protected at all, so they could hit that directly and update a topic. Now these problems are easy enough to fix, but that means I need to add a separate spec in here for each of the branching possibilities, and it'll just get worse as our logic gets more complicated because I also want users to be able to edit topics that they own, so that can get uh, pretty crazy in here, especially when you're testing at this high of a level. It's not very practical. So whenever I'm faced with a situation, it's a sign that I need to make the controller simpler and move all the complex logic down into the model layer so I can test that extensively at a lower level. So going back into the controller before filter, when we handle any authorization logic, let's delegate this off into another object. Now let's call it current permission, and then let's check if the permission is allowed for this given action. And then if it is, if it isn't actually, we'll redirect to uh, the root URL and say not authorized. So we need this current permission object and I'll just define a method here called current permission and let's make a permission class and instantiate that here and then pass in the current user since it will need that information and let's also uh, handle this uh, with some caching so that it is only instantiated once if it's called multiple times. 
So I still need to make that permission class, and I'll do that inside of the models directory. Even though it's not an active record model, I still consider it a model, so I'll call permission.rb, and let's define that class. And I'm actually going to inherit this from a struct just con for convenience so that we can pass in that user attribute. So now we just need that allow method, and let me repeat the same behavior that we did in the controller where we just check if the user is an admin. And if we check out the specs again, you can see they are still passing because this is just a refactoring to get the logic into the model layer. Now we still have a security hole here since we only authorize the edit action. Instead, I like to make this more generic and authorize every single action in the same way. So I'm going to move this behavior into the application controller instead of having it just for this one action. So in here, I'm going to add a before filter and let's say authorize again and then perform that same authorization. But now I also need to pass in more information here since it doesn't know what controller and action uh, are testing the authorization. So in this allow method, I'm going to have it accept the controller name and the action name as a string. Now I'll also need to change the permission class to accept that controller and action arguments. Now this is going to break our high level request specs since we're now authorizing every action, but this is a rare case where I think it's okay to be in the red for a little while as we're spiking out this authorization functionality. Whenever you're building a generic authorization system, I think it's a good idea to start with the case where everything is locked down by default except maybe the root URL so you can try it out. So in this case, I'm going to check to see if the controller equals topics and the action equals index. Now when I try this out, you can see that any page except for this home page here is going to tell me I'm not authorized. Any controller action that I try to execute, no matter where it is, it won't allow me because everything is locked down. Now this is a great place to be since it means our authorization can be controlled entirely from this one location. The controller is simple and we can handle all complex logic through this and we can easily test it directly so we don't have to go through the high level request specs. So let's do that. I'm going to add a new permission spec inside of this models directory here. Uh, let's just call it permission uh, spec.rb. And then I'll require the spec helper and describe the permission model. And let's set focus equals true so that I can focus specifically on this and only run the tests inside of here. And I have that set up in the spec helper. You can see here, uh, only run the focus equals true setting or run everything else if no uh, specs have the focus. Now let's first describe the case where the user is a guest, and this means they aren't currently signed in. So the uh, subject will be a permission instance where nil is passed in as the current user. And I wanted to say that it should allow access to the topics index page. Now this currently won't work. You can see we have this failure undefined method allow uh, because there's no matcher called this, but I like the way this reads. So let's just define a matcher. Now for convenience, I'll just paste the code in right in line here, but you might want to toss this in a uh, spec support directory here. So what I'm doing is just defining this custom allow matcher, and this takes a permission object that is called on, and this checks that if the allow uh, with a question mark passing in those arguments should be true. And now we get a passing spec since that is the one page which is allowed. Now we can easily define the permissions for each of the other actions. So they should be able to access the show action, but not the new action or the create action or edit or update or destroy. So most of the actions I don't want the guest to be able to access. And so the only failure here is that he should be able to access the show action, but is currently not allowed. We can get this passing again by going to the permission and checking if this action is within either uh, index or show actions. And there we go, we're back in the green. Next, let's do the admin permissions. So as an admin user, and I need to uh, pass in a admin user here and I can use factory girl to help us out. User admin is true. So this we want to allow everything. So I'll just say should allow access to each of those. And of course, this is filled with failures, but it should be an easy fix. So let's do this existing behavior only if the user is nil, and let's otherwise check if the user is an admin, and then allow everything. And now we're passing again, yay! Now we have one more type of user left to describe, and that is a member, which is basically a logged in user who is not an admin. 
So as a member, where the admin is false, uh, let's pretty much give him access to everything except the destroy action. And of course that fails. So let's make it pass by handling the case of every other user. We'll just, uh, let's check if the controller is a topics and the action doesn't equal destroy. And with that change, we're back in the green. Now let's try this out. If I uh, visit various pages here, the authorization functionality behaves exactly like I expect because I define it in that permission object. If I try destroying a topic, that will not work because I'm just signed in as a normal member instead of as an admin. Now it would make more sense if that destroy link was gone and it would just show up if I had that permission. You can find that destroy link in this index template right here. So let's wrap this with an if condition and let's have a helper method called allow where we can pass in a controller name and an action and then, then it will only show that link if it's allowed. And we can do that same thing for other links such as this edit link and only show that if we have permission and the same goes for this new topic link. Let's only show that if we can access that new action. Now I still need to define that allow helper method and I can do that easily enough in this application controller by delegating it to the current permission object. So I'm just going to set up a delegation here that allow method and delegate that to the current permission. And I can also uh, make that helper method by calling helper method allow. Now if I reload this page, uh, there goes that destroy link since I no longer have permission. Now notice I didn't test drive this change. Uh, for most applications, I don't think it's necessary to test the view extensively with this kind of logic because, I mean, if that destroy link was there, the user still wouldn't be able to do anything since the action itself is protected. So it's not really a security hole here. It's more of an aesthetic thing to hide it for uh, users that don't have permission. Now, if I mark myself as an admin, I could see that destroy link. Uh, if I try it here and click edit profile, well, that actually won't work because it says not authorized since I haven't given myself permission to access the user's controller edit action. So I need to define permissions for both the sessions controller and user's controller actions. And I'll just do that here in the uh, permission spec. Let's say I want uh, to be able to access pretty much everything except being able to update a user. And for the uh, member, they'll be able to do pretty much everything as well, including updating a user and I won't bother changing the admin because that logic is simple. Actually, since I want an admin to have permission to do anything, let me just change this to one check where uh, allow anything here. Okay, now we have all kinds of failing specs. Let's work on getting them passing. In real world, you might want to work slower depending on the complexity of the situation. Now trying to stick with the pattern we set here is a little difficult and it can get pretty complicated with these other controller and actions thrown in. So this is where explicit return statements can come in pretty handy and clean things up. Uh, we can say return true uh, if the controller equals sessions, for example, because all session actions I want to allow access to. And then at the end of this method, always return false. So this way we'll need to return true explicitly whenever we want to uh, allow access. So it might look something like this, where we check various controller and actions and then allow access in those cases. Or if the user is signed in and if the user is an admin and so on. And now we're back in the green. So now that our authorization is pretty much in place, let's see if our overall request specs will pass too. In the permission spec, I'll remove this focus and then rerun all the tests. And it looks like they almost all pass except this one failing spec that we wrote earlier where I make sure that I cannot edit a topic as a non-admin. I'm expecting it to say not authorized, but it's letting me through. Now the problem here is that I accidentally wrote conflicting specs. Uh, in the permission spec, I said a member should be able to edit a topic, but in the request spec, that I wrote earlier, I said that it should say not authorized if a member does try to edit a topic. So ideally we would only want a member to edit a topic that they created or own, but I won't be getting that to that in this episode. So in the meantime, I'll just say as guest that he should not be able to edit a topic and take out the login process. So this way we just get a passing spec that does do a minor authorization check at the high level. And there we go, now we're back in the green. So we have passing specs and a pretty nice authorization system. 
Now there's a lot more that we could do here. I would like it if our permission class had a nice DSL where we can define permissions instead of having this explicit return true everywhere. Also, what if I want to change the permissions depending on the attributes of a given topic, such as whether the user owns it or not? And also, how do I define permissions on uh, whether the user can edit a specific attribute on the topic model? Those are all cases that I want to handle in the next episode. In the meantime, we have a pretty solid authorization system which is based on controller actions. Uh, admins have the ability to destroy topics, or if we log out, we don't have the ability to edit a topic or create one. The links all hide automatically for us, and we can feel safe and secure that the uh, actions themselves aren't accessible either. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.